Why do you want to be a teacher? Oh, because I love kids. That's not good enough. I grew up in the Philippines. I started working at the age of 10. I'm so determined education is the only way to get out of poverty. I did my best. My dad was uh, studying to become a teacher. And then when I was born, he got a regular job doing forklift operator. So I chose to become a teacher, you know, kind of fill in those, those, those shoes. Miss Castillo, in my fifth grade year, she gave me a charm bracelet. She's like, I want you to always remember where you came from. So I was one of those why children. The more I would learn and absorb, then I could share with someone else, and I enjoyed that. So in college, we were in a boarding school in Georgia. Their view on it, special education was just like, we don't deal with that. What do you mean? Like, so that also like ignited a fire. My teachers seeing that I had that leadership skills in me, that just continued to push me forward. When I started teaching the concepts, I'm struggling. Why my students are not getting it? Pre-K, you can always mold them. They say we're a weird group of teachers for wanting to work with preteens. This is the beginning of your path for life, not just the beginning of the path for high school. So there's so much that they have to learn. 92% of my kids are Spanish as their home language. The perfect world <laughs> for a teacher. All of my students, they don't have to worry about what they're gonna eat at home. They don't have to worry about you know, staying up late to help mom with baby sister. In that moment, I started thinking of puzzles and games. Emergent bilinguals will be able to grasp the concept that I want them to learn. We bring in ideas of the real world and put them in our classroom. For a kid, the day before he took my seventh grade start, he's like, I'm not going to pass. I said, well, that's your first issue. You go into a room and you say, I'm going to get 100. Whether you get that 100 or not is not the point. OK, now let's get better the next year. Or let's, or let's get better the next week. Kindergarten isn't nap time. Kindergarten's, you know, so much more. So it's just them knowing, like, they're somewhere where they can feel safe. Our job is to inspire you to come, but then teach you the truth and how to live it. It's just taking their five-year-old energy and putting it to use. I see that happening now. Like, sometimes they'll tell me good morning before I tell them good morning. All teachers, I would say, know the content. But if you don't know your students, it's impossible for them to learn. I don't think they'll ever really know the amount of planning that goes behind every single lesson. Everything doesn't always come out in the test. And so you feel like you're not doing your job. Helping students learn how to deal with conflict resolution and they act a certain way at school, that can just just destroy the whole day. I wish I could have saved you from this. You're affecting not just yourself. I'm in a room with 26 other students. I feel like such an ineffective teacher sometimes. Honestly, every year I'm like questioning myself, should I continue? But I get a student that, you know, Miss Williams, you're the best teacher. And it's like those little things here and there make you want to stay. They like it and they talk about it and they share with their other friends and their friends like, I want to get into your class. And the email of their parents, thank you for telling my kids, and now my kids are sharing it to me. Oh, my heart, my heart, my heart. <laughs> we just make it as realistic as we can so that they go out to the real world. I know what that says. And hey, guess what? They're reading. The kid came back and it's like, I've never failed another math test since your class. I've shared my life stories, and then they go out and they, Dr. Woodard, I did this too. Dr. Woodard, I did this. Hey, come to my graduation. Hey, come be a part of this. I have students that have graduated from medical school. That's why we're here. No, that's 26 different moms and dads that are trusting you. Somebody needs to help them. Somebody needs to guide them. Because you can't just complain about it. You have to do something. <laughs>